was very simple, which was God, which was above the soul. And I wrote three chapters on this. Now I'll break these down for you in a little while. What I decided was that if I change the blueprint of my brain, it will affect the nervous system, which will then heal the body. Remember, I haven't taken any chemotherapy or any medical drugs at all, at all. No surgery, nothing. And I was diagnosed with one of the most aggressive cancers that you can get. So from this, what I've done is I basically started writing down different thoughts under those different categories. Where I got these thoughts from, you have to, is a very interesting place. I was doing a therapy to get well, a physical therapy as well, which meant I had to take 13 vegetable juices a day. This is uh, about seven or eight pints of vegetable juice, organic juice, every single day, every hour, drinking juice. I had to do five enemas a day, coffee enemas. I don't know if any of you know what coffee enemas are. It's not a great, interesting subject, but it's where you have to take coffee from the rear of the body, retain it in your lower colon area, and hold it there for 15 minutes. And that coffee stimulates the liver and the gallbladder. And then when you pass it out, when you go to the toilet, it's only about a liter of coffee. No cream, no sugar, just straight coffee. You hold it there. And then when you go to the toilet, it releases all the toxins from your liver. Okay? So five of those a day and 13 juices a day for 18 months. I wasn't allowed salt. I wasn't allowed sugar. I wasn't allowed anything. A packet, a tin, nothing. Everything had to be perfectly organic. So it was, it was a very, it was a headache in itself. From seven in the morning to eleven at night, just running this. I just went into a zone where I just okay, I'm going to do this. I'm on crutches at the same time, right? Not able to walk with this leg. So anyway, while I was so busy with this, and obviously with the help from my dad and my mum, uh, busy with this therapy all the time, I didn't have time to meditate. But these words were coming into my mind, like proverbs, phrases, like my soul was speaking to me. I don't want to sound airy-fairy about this, but there was inspirations dropping into my head, which I would write down, and there was about a thousand of them. And they ended up filling the contents of those um, chapters for me. And then every day, I would read these phrases, which I'll come to you with in, a, in the next section, and it started to heal my brain. Okay, so from that point onwards, I decided that if my brain is thinking differently, the cancer must stop growing. Now remember, in, in about four weeks, it had gone from just poking out of my thigh to being a rugby ball size. And the tumor still sits in my leg, right? We didn't get an MRI of it today, but we should have done. Um, but, miraculously, it did stop growing. It actually stopped growing, to the amazement of the doctors. And I'll go on to this in a little bit of de de um, detail later. Now, what carried on for the next eight years was me what, reading this book every day. It was affecting my nervous system, which was affecting the cancer, and it's the only thing I've done to stop the disease. I'll tell you something else interesting. Bear with me on all this, because it all ties in. The person that paid for the therapy in its initial stages, obviously, when I don't come from a wealthy background at all, yeah? But as fate would have it, my brother, you know, who was not even allowed to take O-levels and A-levels because of his condition. He was 15 when he got sick with ankylosis and spondylitis. He eventually was able to take them at home, these degrees. And he went to LSE eventually when he cured himself. He went to Hong Kong. He'd done very well for himself. And because of that, he was able to pay for my therapy. You see? Without him being there, we would have been stuck. So everything comes back. Do you see what I mean here, right? Because of him, I'm here today. And I'm here today, and I'm watching these guys doing that to him. Alright, so someone who's already struggled in their life and given everything back, then is held at gunpoint and told you're going to die. Okay? So th th we've got to examine all these things, and that's what Chikri Foundation is doing. We're examining all these different things, and we're looking at how consciousness affects people. So coming back to my situation, so I'm sitting here and I've been through this situation for eight years and we start to examine what is the basis of disease.